Next up for the final press conference for today is Combank Matilda's forward, Queenslander, and also cap number 220 in Courtney Vine. Court, you're back in your home state. How does it feel now that you're a couple of matches into your very first World Cup? Yeah, it feels amazing. Um, this is my first, yeah, FIFA Women's World Cup and to be able to do it on home soil and back where home is, um, yeah, it's a dream come true. Jessica. I just want to start with one generically about Queensland because what a great state it is. <laughs> um, just for the Queenslanders, is there something in the water here? Because we seem to have a lot of Matildas from Queensland and coming onto this game on Saturday night being played in Brisbane. Why do you think there is so many Queenslanders in this team on Saturday night? That is a great question. Um, it might be something in the water. I don't know what it is. Uh, there is a lot of Queenslanders in this, uh, in this squad and I had the privilege of actually playing with a lot of them at Brisbane Raw um, when I was younger and, yeah, I don't know what it is. I feel like uh, we had a really good development program in Queensland, a QAS, um, that a lot of us came through, a lot of the younger ones. Uh, and, yeah, it just... don't know. <laughs> They're just great. <laughs> now to the, to the actual game itself. Um, you, I hate to kind of bring, bring up the sense that you're one of the, you are the player, I guess, that's had to, in a way of the team dynamic, you've had to kind of take your role back to the bench and obviously you went from starting to move back. But mm. I would assume you're a player that you're very much a, whatever the team needs, I'm going to do it. There must be a sense of that now that with Sam back, if, if she wants to resume her place as a starting player on Saturday night, I'm sure the likes of Mary or whoever it might be would probably follow suit with what you've had to do as well. Yeah, for me, um, I'm just happy to do whatever I can for the squad. Uh, whatever part that is, whether that's starting um, or coming off the bench and closing out a game, um, I am just so happy to be a part of this squad and this this team and what we're doing for uh, football in Australia and the world. Um, I think anyone will be happy to do any role uh, that's required of them. And we don't know. It's a tough competitive 23. Um, it, we're going into a quarter final. It'll be who's fittest and who's ready to go. Um, of course, defence often wins games and points. Um, and the defence has been pretty good for Australia and a few clean sheets. Um, I guess, is that something that the team can hang their hat on at the moment? Yeah, we're all uh, very impressed with our clean sheets at the moment. Um, it's something we've worked really hard on, I think, in the last year. We've really cracked down on our defence and, uh, yeah, I think each and every game we're getting better and better at it. Um, yeah, we're just very, very happy. Yeah, I think back then it's something I never thought would happen. Um, I think I was back then also just happy to play in front of 100 people and uh, <laughs> make my debut for a club that I'd been pushing for. Um, so now to be in a position where we're playing in front of 75,000 plus people with viewers like six point, what was it, six point like eight or whatever it was for the viewers um, is just unbelievable for women's sport and women's football in general and Australian football. Uh, nothing, ne I just never thought it was going to happen. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I didn't know that stat at all. Um, yeah, that would have been about 10 years ago now, I think, that we all would have versed each other. So it's, yeah, pretty surreal to be here with them all now, playing at a FIFA Women's World Cup on home soil. Just in terms of your matchup with France on Saturday night, when you think about the build up, the tone of the plan you had in place in the lead up to this tournament, we wanted to test you against the best, mm. 
and it was he always said it's going to hurt at times probably going to the girls aren't going to like me in the process that I want to do do you feel like heading into Saturday night everything you had planned for you is finally starting to pay off and, and you feel more prepared than ever to take on a, an opponent like France given the warm-up match a couple of weeks ago as well yeah, I think he's done a great job of planning. Uh, I know we've versed a lot of top-ranked teams, but I think that's what we needed to know where we sit um, versing them. And, yeah, to get the game prior to this tournament starting against France obviously helped us um, prepare for teams like them going into this tournament and knowing that we'd probably verse a team like them at this stage. Um, it's something we prepared for. And, yeah, I do think he's done really well at, at prepping us. This World Cup sees so many players like from the Liberty A-League, both past and present, playing for many different countries, including Australia. What do you hope will um, that will you know, do to the league for the coming season and coming seasons ahead after the tournament's finished? Yeah, I hope that everyone gets around football after this tournament and um, that young ones want to come and whether that boy or girl uh, wants to come watch the Liberty A-League and know that you can go from that league and become a world stage player and play at this World Cup. A lot of us have been in the Liberty A-League and um, that's why we're here today. I don't think, you know, a lot of our pathways are different and we've gone different ways, but I wouldn't be here today without the Liberty A-League. Um, Mary Fowler, how good can she be? She's already great. <laughs> I just don't even know. <laughs> no, she can just be amazing. You know, I've said to her before this tournament began that she's going to have a fantastic tournament and um, she just has so much more to go and she's still so young. Uh, I think we forget sometimes she's just so mature and um, knows what she wants and she's her own individual kind of person and when she gets in that field, you just see something special and I just think she's going to keep growing from that. We saw Kaya Simon warming up this morning. Uh, she was picked as sort of like a pinch hitter off the bench in big games like mm. the quarterfinal you've got. Um, can you talk about her progression and, and how she's looking from the start of camp to now? Is she ready for that role? Yeah, I think with Kaya, she brings a lot more to the team than just on the field attributes. And um, she's done a, like, a fantastic job to get to where she is right now. And she's had a lot of setbacks, but she's here now. And I think, yeah, she's a big time player and hopefully we can use her in these big moments. Yeah, I think we've talked about it uh, quite a lot because it was just an amazing ball. Like, as it couldn't be any more perfect. Um, I think we've all watched it, I'm going to say, close to at least 20 times. Uh, <laughs> probably more for the ones that did repost it. Um, again, I just can't wait to see Mary just keep going because she's c killing it at the moment. When you guys were watching the France game last night, mm. who's the hardest person to, to watch a game alongside? Who gets stressed? And, uh, <laughs> what was that experience like? And particularly in that period where they scored a couple of goals in a couple of minutes and it looked like they were going to be a pretty formidable team on Saturday. Yeah, I think uh, everyone watches the game differently. There's some girls that will stay and watch it in the players' lounge or some there's some girls that go watch it in the room. Um, some people that might not want to watch it just to, you know, not freak themselves out too much. But I think the girls that really get into it and really watch it and want to sit with each other and kind of analyse it are probably the older girls um, like Steph, Macca and Kate and they all sit and, and really watch it. I don't think they get stressed. I think they just like watching football and looking at them tactically. Time for two more questions. Hey. Um, when you were watching the game... I think France are obviously a world-class team. They have very good individual players and they're quite fast themselves. Um, I think for us, they they commit forward quite a lot. Uh, they have fullbacks that are really aggressive and really good one-on-one -on -one dribblers. Um, but I think for us, we can expose them on the counter and that's just part of our, our plan, I think. Final question to Mark over here. Ago, their coaches come out and said that game was, you know, nothing. Mm. But 
sort of what what have you got team got got like out of that, and sort of how much do you think teams come to like you guys uh, that night? Yeah, obviously in the bigger scheme, it was a friendly um, at the end of the day. But for us, we learnt a lot from that game, and now we have images of us versing them in our formation and what we can improve on. We look inwards before we look outwards uh, a lot more and I think we'll be going back and analysing our own game against them and uh, just picking apart what we can expose.